Hi, so today we're going to talk about the concept of determinant versus indeterminate growth and through this presentation I'm going to show you how different aspects of a plant will grow whether it will yield in growth or continue. So let's begin. Determinant growth is the first concept we're going to talk about today and uh, to understand its general meaning we're going to have to understand its definition. So this process is the growth pattern in which growth of an organism or organ ceases when an adult stage is reached, meaning that growth stops at a certain point. Now, this uh, specific growth pattern is found in leaves of a plant, seeds, flowers, and fruits. So let's continue. And in order to understand the concept of determinate growth, we're going to have to understand what the flora meristem is. Now, the flora meristem is the main subject responsible for determinate growth. It produces four consecutive rows of the spirals of organs, sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels, which are all located in the flower itself. And this um, and the flora meristem gives rise to the flower of the plant. All right. Now the biggest question we find here of uh, determinate growth is why do these organ organisms stop growing? And I'm going to explain that when a leaf of any specific organism stops growing, it's due to the production of retardant hormones. The plant releases these hormones to specific sites of the plant, for example leaves or uh, seeds, causing them to yield in growth. If these hormones would not be released, every organ of the plant would keep growing. Now, now you're allowed to take a quiz, so stop this video to look at these questions and later go back to previous slides and look up your answers if they were either correct or wrong. But right now we're going to continue. So the next uh, topic we're going to talk about is indeterminate growth. Now, once again, we're going to have to understand its definition, so I'm going to read it to you. This is a process of an open-ended growth pattern in which an organism or organ continues to grow as long as it lives. Now, we know that this behavior is mainly found in roots and shoots of a plant, and it's important to understand that indeterminate growth is also a pattern of bud development associated with a continual twig elongation, meaning a continuous twig... Um, uh, lengthening and bud formation until twig growth is stopped. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to talk about the shoot apical meristem. Now, this is the main one of the main subjects responsible for indeterminate growth, and it becomes something called the inflorescence meristem, which produces flora meristems until the plant yields functioning. In other terms, dies. Now, if we remember, flora meristems deal with determinate growth. They give rise to the sepal, petals, etc., and the different aspects within the uh, within the flower itself. Now, we have to understand that as the apical meristem dies, it can no longer produce flora meristems continuously as it does, causing, well, meaning that the plant has died itself. Now, so now we're going to begin to talk about the root apical meristem. And this plays an important role in indeterminate growth. It is undifferentiated tissue at the apex of the root that gives rise to the organs of the root. Now, critical steps in setting up dimension and thickness of the root axis and supply of cells to the zone of elongation are the rate and position of cell divisions in the meristem. Now, in, under in understanding how a uh, plant elongates and receives thickness, we're going to have to talk about the concepts of primary and secondary growth. Primary and secondary growth. So, Primary growth is the lengthening of roots and shoots, basically elongation of the plant, that results from cell division and differentiation of the apical meristem. Now, secondary growth contributes to the increasing girth of the stem. An example is this is bark on trees. This growth occurs from cell division in the lateral meristem, and this process causes older dead tissue to become the outermost bark while the inner bark consists of the newly formed tissue. Now we got to understand that in the center of the tree itself, uh, a new tissue and cells get produced and while older dead tissue gets pushed out but still becomes a layer of the tree, it becomes something we know, we know as bark, well outer bark in this, in this case. So, so this is quiz number two and once again you should take out a piece of paper and pencil and uh, this, these questions are going to consist of the questions of indeterminate growth that we just covered. And if you would like to see accurate answers, just go back to previous slides to see whether your answers were right or wrong in this quiz. 
Now I hope this helps, and this was my presentation of determinant versus indeterminate growth.